Welcome back. Here we are now at exercise number 33. I'll put that over here and pretty far out, so I'll, so I'll be coming in. For this lesson now, we're going to build on uh, the just the prior lessons that we've learned. Start to come in here a little bit. And we're going to work with now a measured uh, two-point ceiling, so you can kind of get the feel for that. And then uh, lesson 34 will be a two-point room where we put it all together in scale and then we'll put some figures. So it will be the first one where we start to get more complex. So stay with me on this one and make sure you get this, this uh, idea under your belt. And then when you feel confident, go on, obviously, to 34. So let's get our setup in. So I'm going to go, since my paper is 18 by 24, I'm going to uh, go 9 up from the bottom here, mark 9 inches over here, so I can lay in my eye line and in the horizon line. Since they're still both the same, we're in two point, little one and two point, right? Only in three point will your eye line and your horizon line not uh, necessarily, but well, they won't be the same. So uh, half of 24 horizontally is 12, so I'll come over and mark that. If you followed along with all the lessons, congratulations, you should, you should know how to do this. Kind of backwards and forwards now. We'll get our center of vision in. So we can bring that down and set up our cone here. And then I'm gonna put my station points I'm going to throw down a line first, and then after that, I'm going to put the station point from the center point here now. Seven, I've got seven inches in my notes. So generally how I do my lectures, I've got my notes just right off camera and from my past lectures and also lectures from when I was a student, actually, from Gary Meyer at Art Center. So they're right off camera. And sometimes they're, I review them, but sometimes even I forget. This stuff can be complex at times, and so sometimes you forget, so take good notes. Okay, station point now is seven inches down. I'll label that SP for station point, and let's get our setup. Let's get our cone in. 30 degrees is half and half, right? Total of 60 degree cone, so we'll get our 30 degree uh, triangle out, and... Get that measured in nicely, set that up against the center of vision, out to station point, and then obviously through the horizon line, and there's 30 degrees, and then I can use my compass for the other the other uh, 30 degrees, which I like to do instead of keep continuing to have to do it to the other side with my triangle. This seems a little bit easier. Let's bring that cone all the way through there, like so. And then, of course, we'll just line that through our station point to the end of the cone over there. And then we've got our cone set in. Okay, so we've got our four, our fundamental four set up, right? So we've got that. We're good to go. Now, my next move, I'm going to come in a little bit here. All right, so my next move now will be to set our measuring line up. Uh, since we're going to be in the sky plane, um, out here. Okay, so about right out where my pencil's moving right in through here. So I'm going to put a nice horizontal line for my measuring line for our scale. Ground, it's not really a ground line anymore, right? But it's a measuring line. So I'll throw that out there, nice and horizontal. And for our scale, one inch will equal uh, one foot. That's what I've got. So let me write that out here. So one inch, make sure that's in the camera. Yeah, one inch equals one foot. So again, if you're on the metric system, just adjust the best you can accordingly. Okay, so we're going to throw a measuring scale out. I'm going to put zero, a little off center, so about right there. So I'm going to put a little dot there for uh, off center. And then again, a uh, one inch equals one foot. So we're going to measure out, I think we're going to do an eight foot by eight foot ceiling uh, like we did the floor. So I'll st start measuring out from zero here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one more out here will be eight right there make sure yeah you can get that in the camera so one two three four five six seven eight and of course that's eight feet in flat space and then we'll do the same thing over 
On the left side of our measuring line, our baseline, remember I've called that in the past, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and we can label that so we'll know. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and of course, eight there. So we're good to go. Okay, so now we want to, we can do two things. We can arbitrarily thrust a line out for our vanishing points, or do you remember from the last lesson when we had our 45, 45, 90 triangle, 90 here at the bottom, right, lined up with the station point down here. That's another way to do it. So I could hit the corner of the station point and then I can adjust where I want my vanishing points. That's another way to do it too for a little faster uh, expediting. I'm just gonna kind of line up where my notes are. You can't see my notes, obviously. When you're following along, you follow along with my notes. I'm gonna do it this way for a while because it's kind of nice to already have them both set in at 90, which is what you need coming from the station point, so we can avoid the line back, if you will. So this looks close to my um, notes, so I'm gonna put the left finishing point along the horizon line and the right finishing point along the horizon line where my triangle touches the horizon line. So right there's a dot for RVP, right vanishing point, and right there's a dot for LVP for left vanishing point, okay? So we have that. All right, so our next move is from zero, right, is to start to project just a depth line. Now from zero to the left vanishing point here, okay? And then also from zero to the right vanishing point. Now we're good there. Okay, so now we've got to swing those vanishing points, right? Those, those lines down from the left finishing point, the station point, that line needs to be swung over. Now I haven't drawn that line. If you need to draw that line, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna leave it out for a while because the faster you get at this, here's a good lesson. Now, those of you who are staying with formal perspective that are not my NKU students, that are just YouTube land students, good for you. Formal linear, linear perspective will give you such an advantage to spatially understand how we look and see and we can wrap around space, but then you'll start to shorthand this. So without this line there, we still know that this distance, right, all it does is just swung, be swung up. So let's do that really quickly. So from the LVP over to the station point, that I've got nine and one, two, three quarters. So if yours is a little bit different, that's okay. Take your measurement, swing it on up and over to the horizon line here. I've got nine, and one, two, three quarters right there, and that's my left, right, my left measuring point. I'm gonna put that lower this time since we're doing a ceiling. Now same thing on the right, remember? So from the, the station point to the right vanishing point that just swings over, so I'm gonna take that distance of these two points and measure that out. That's the easiest way to do it without a long, big compass. I've got 10 and 3 sixteenths. Whatever you have is what you have. And so bring that over, even if you're using your metric system. You, those of you that are using the metric system, which is probably most everybody else <clears throat> outside the US, maybe a few other places, um, you probably learned to adjust already. So there we go. So there's my right measuring point right there. So those are now swung up and over. It makes it really nice and pretty easy. Now, what we want to do now, remember this line, and let me come in, let's see if I can get in a little closer for us. Yeah, we need to get, get in there where you can see those vanishing points just at the edge. Just remember that some of the scaling, the eights, six, sevens, and eights are off the page a little bit. Okay, what we're looking for now is to use our measuring point lines, right, to demarcate, right, across our angled lines. Let me draw that, our diminishment for our ceiling in two point, a little stronger, so you can see it here, and also here, nice and clean and clear and crisp, so you can see that, that's important. Now, let's let's start working on finding measurements. So our, from our left measuring point, 
through one. Okay, that line would look like that. I'm gonna draw one line so you can see it. Then I'm not gonna draw lines anymore. I'm just gonna demarcate where that's at. So that's right there, okay? Then we go to two, there. Then we come out to three. We make a mark there. We come out now to four. We make a mark there. This is where it gets a little confusing. Keep it, keep it together. Four, five, okay, six, right there. That's six feet in perspective. Seven, seven feet measured in perspective, right along that line. And of course now eight, which is our last one. And I'm out. I'm still on the camera on that side, so that's good. So eight over there and I'll demarcate that there. Okay, now we have our diminishment guide for our room, okay? That's important because we'll be going back to the right vanishing point for this. Now, let's do the other side and demarcate on this end as well. Okay, let me sharpen my pencil. My, I'm gonna use red for this and it's a little dull, so always take the time to, to sharpen. Now, <clears throat> I had one student ask, why do you, why do you waste camera time? Uh, sharp, one of my NKU students, hey, why do you waste camera time sharpening your pencil? Because I want to show you, <laughs> as a good mentor and role model, why it's so important. My students here at the university, they get so tired of me saying, sharpen your pencil, sharpen your pencil. But the results speak for themselves, meaning that a sharper tool is a more responsive um, sensitive tool. So now we're going to measure from our flat scaling on the right side back to our right measuring point along our right plane, right? Okay. So we'll go from one. I'm just going to make marks. One. Line up right measuring point to two. There's two. Okay. Line up to three to the right measuring point. There's three feet in scale in perspective. Then there's four right there and then of course there's five and how far am I off? Okay, I'm still on the camera there and then there's six just barely and then of course seven and eight slightly off out of camera you, you'll be able to figure that out. There's seven so it gets further out right and then of course now eight measured getting getting even further out so there's eight right it's a little bit tighter in there make sure you get that tighter Eight right there. So now we have our demarcated measured marks and we're really ready to start making our ceiling. Okay, so remember now from the left vanishing point we're going to come through this right plane. Through these marks now, through these marks, through the left vanishing point. That's important. Through the marks that we made from the left vanishing point. Forget about the measuring point anymore. That's important. So we're going to make and draw through here. There's one. And we're going to draw through here. There's two. You can overdraw. Please do because that will be important later. From the left vanishing point through mark number three. There we go. Through the left vanishing point mark number four. There we go. And then five. And you keep on going. There's my six. Okay. Right there. There's my seven, right there, and there's the the uh, eight foot mark right there for our two point measured room or ceiling in this in this case. I'm going to draw through the zero here a little bit further now. That's the first one we got just to go past that. Okay, now we're well on our way. Now now let's do the reverse from the right vanishing point through our measured points. Here, not through here, but through our measure points. Okay, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Okay, do that. That's the key trick. Sometimes I mess that up, and when I'm trying to figure out a complex problem, and I'm like, oh boy, now I've got to, <laughs> I've got to start all over again. It happens. If it happens in this lesson or another, don't worry about it. Just start over. Take a deep breath. Go grab, grab a drink of coffee or whatever libation you want and just do it over again. No big deal. All right, so from the right vanishing point, right here, we can see it in the camera through measurement one on our left plane. It's a matter of opposites. Just draw all the way through. Same thing on two and just bring it all the way across and through even further because you can do more tiles if you want. 
through there. There we go. Okay, and through four, I believe now. Okay, and through five. Really pretty easy once you get the system down. And you know what? It's easy to forget if you don't do it for a while. That's why a good notebook is so important. That's why you can always come back to these videos. These videos are important to me. In one case, for me, it's like I'm putting down my entire notebook uh, on video, and I, I can even reference it, too, or I can always use it as an encyclopedia for other students, which is what it's really for. Through there, and I think that's got it. So that's eight, let's count. So that's zero, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course you can count the tile. So now we have an eight foot by eight foot tiled ceiling. And let's tighten that up darker so we can see that nice and clean. Because you may have to scale, uh, scale on something above the horizon line in two point or, or eye level. So eight by eight here. There we go, and through there, and through there, bingo. So now we've got eight units here, or eight feet, right? And we've got eight feet here. Of course, that would be eight in diagonal too. Now, we can also do and check our work and do a 45 degree measuring point, right? Through those corners, those angles where they all line up nice and tight. They may be off by about a sixteenth. That's about as much as you want to miss right through there. Boom. There's our, remember, our trusty 45 degree measuring point. So you can do it this way or you can find a, with the 45 just one tile and then recreate it that way. Either way is fine. This, this way is also easy, but you also know that these are equal too. So what you could have done is set up a little small measuring line at one and one, right? And then recreate it lots of 45 degrees. There's plenty of ways to do that. Multiple ways of doing things help you with, helps you with shortcuts if and when you need them. It's pretty, um, it's pretty powerful. Uh, kind of exercise. So there you go. That's exercise now 33 one foot uh, is equal to one inch in scale and flat space above. And then remember we just swung our vanishing points to make them measuring points up. And we kind of did a shorthand on that to make it go even faster. All right. So there you go. Uh, now the next lesson, lesson number 34, we're going to do a two point room in scale with, I believe, a figure and a box and, and maybe a window or so. Okay, so stay tuned. That's what's coming up next. Bye-bye. So exercise 34 now. We're going to do a 10 foot deep by 10 foot high by 10 foot uh, wide two point room in scale. And we're going to put a figure in a box in there and maybe a window or so. We'll just see how it uh, goes a little bit. Now, um, let's go ahead and get our fundamental setup, our fun fundamental four, and do that first. So the uh, horizon line, the eye line, will be at nine inches up from the bottom of the picture plane. So we'll have that here, right there. Okay, I'm pulled out pretty far so you can see all that, kind of see how I do it. And then I'll run my horizon line all the way across there. Station point will be right in the middle at 12 inches because I'm at 18 inches by 24 inches in my drawing. There's my center point. And so our center, center, uh, center vision, our line will come through here. Then down below, I'll kind of overdraw a little bit here, okay, and through there, and let's see where I've got my station point. Got my station point now, it looks like at six, six and a half uh, inches down. So let's measure that six and a half down, okay, let's go six and a half. Okay, so we've got six and a half down there. There we go. So there's our station point right in through there. That's where we are flat down. So when we come look up, we can look through. Let's go ahead and put our cone in at 30 and 30. 90 degrees for your finishing out of your fundamental setup here. So 
our scaling, I'll, I'll talk while I'm doing this, our scaling is gonna be, I've got three quarters of an inch is going to equal one foot. So keep that in mind. So there's our cone there, and then I'll bring that over to the opposite side. Swing that over really quickly. There we go. Okay. I'll make sure we get that accurate. Through there, there's our cone. So we know you don't have to put the cone in every time, but we will for a good while, and I think we need it to keep everything roughly engaged inside there. So there we go. All right, so we've got our cone. So we're good to go there. So the first thing we want to establish is, of course, we're going to be using a ground line measuring line, is where that corner of our room wants to come in together. Now I'm going to pull in a little bit too so we can start to see this better. There we go. And it gets us closer in. And so I'm going to kind of establish where I want that zero point to be on my on our ground line. And I've got it looks like in my net it's about right. So it's just slightly in the cone about right in through there. So I'm going to draw a nice horizontal line across there, nice and long and deep and wide there, okay? So we've got that. I'm going to come in a little bit closer so you can see. Make sure we can see further through there. And so again, try to line up your drawing as best you can with mine, if you can. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a couple of things. We want the elevation now to be about, I've got it in my notes at five feet. So I'm going to put over here, there we are, elevation at about five feet. So when we're looking at it, we're at five feet. So that's the first, first thing I'm going to do is, I probably should have done that earlier. I kind of messed that up. Well, I may have to go back and have you erase a little bit since we're not we're starting I won't edit it out so I'm gonna measure three-quarter marks so that's one two three quarters that's one one two three quarters that's two one two three quarters that's three one two three quarters that's four and then yeah one two three quarters that's five so I messed that up a little bit so see where I messed up I'm just gonna bring my measuring line down a little bit and I'm not even gonna edit this out I'm just gonna keep on keep on going because it won't take long to correct it so I should have done that first sometimes I forget what I what I what I know so it happens so that's where my ground line will be and I'm gonna take my eraser where did I put it there's a good one, my Japanese mono eraser, and just take that off. So we need that as our elevation line to touch our measuring line there. So we'll take this off a little bit. I don't want to confuse you or confuse myself, quite frankly. So it's good. I'll show you I mess up too. We all mess up. Messing up is okay. There we go. Okay, so. That's at uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five in elevation. And from the corner, uh, later on, I'm gonna go ahead and measure, continue measuring down to the station point so you can see that how far we're away from the entrance of the room. Our elevation's at five, and so how far we're away from that room will be one, two, three quarters. That's another one. One, two, three quarters. One, two, three quarters. One and two. So about one, two, three, almost four feet uh, from the front will be, the front corner of the room will be over here. All right, so that makes better sense for us. So let's establish the front corner of where we want our room to be. And I'm gonna put it one foot over from center so it's a three-quarter inch scaling so one two three right there that's where zero would be so i want to put a nice big dot so you can see that that's important to see and then i'm going to start scaling this out a little bit since we're going to be 10 feet by 10 feet so we may have to go out pretty good ways so three quarters one two three that's one one two three that's two one two three that's three one, two, three, that's four. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, seven. One, two, three, eight. One, two, three, nine, and then one, two, three, 
10 demarcations over there. There we go. So I'll label those zero, one, zero. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and also 10. Now, now let's do it on the other side. So we've got our first one laid in there from zero to our center of vision, right? So one, two, three. So that one's at one. Okay. And then we'll move over now. One, two, three, two. It's one, two, three. That's three. One, two, three. That's four. One, two, three. That's five. One, two, three. That's six. One, two, three. That's seven. One, two, three. That's eight. One, two, three, that's nine, and one, two, three, that is ten. So let's make sure I'll count. So zero, one, okay, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then of course ten in through there. Okay, so let's find and set up our left. Uh, vanishing point. I'll kind of just arbitrarily shoot it out. Or we could have gotten our right triangle. Maybe I'll just do that so we get our right one really quickly. So again, you can set in your from your station point. You can set your 90 degree triangle right at that station point. I'm going to set mine about this far. Looks pretty good. A little bit off. Off center is always fun. So there's my left vanishing point right there and then my right finishing point right there. So LVP, remember that's 90 degrees, always coming back in through the station point. I'm shorthanding a little bit. Here's our right finishing point right through there too as well. We have our elevation now at five feet and looking in. Okay, so now we're ready to do what? Swing those measuring points up and in. So swinging measuring points, right? That's what we want to do next. Remember from our station point, so I've got it off camera a little bit. If you've been watching, you should, you should know what to do. So from the left finishing point through the station point, we'll swing it up for our left measuring point. And again, the easiest way I find is just to measure it through, unless you've got some rubber band and a string and a pencil. This is pretty pretty easy and solid to do. So I've got from my left finishing point to my station point, I've got, let's see, eights. I've got five eights. So one, two, three, four, five eights. So eight and five eights. I'm going to swing that up. Yours might be just a little different. That's fine. So eight and one, two, three, four, five, right there. So I'll put in there, that's going to be my left measuring point right there and now we'll do it from the right some from the right vanishing point down to the station point measure that distance of those two two dots two areas I've got ten and an eighth and so I'm gonna bring that up and over and swing it ten and an eighth right there bingo we're good to go so there is now my right measuring point what we're doing now is just getting in some of our measuring points and getting some of our, our our vanishing points located so we can start to take off now from our corner of our room at zero i'm going to draw a line through remember to the left vanishing point this is our diminishment and i'm going to overdraw especially back through here a little bit let me pull out a little bit so you can see that's important i'm going to overdraw a little bit through there, okay, and then through the right vanishing point, we'll come right through here too as well. Through the right vanishing point, through point zero, right in through there, all the way through, and then some. Now it's important to note, this is along that thrusting line, that's our right plane, right, for our measuring lines to go through. So I'm gonna put right uh, floor plane, right floor plane right there okay and then also now on the left I may go a little bit longer I don't think I'll need it and I'll go out through here you should just be barely on and off camera and that's left so left left floor plane barely 
on and off. There we go. Okay, so left floor plan. So that's important to now realize. Now we have the impetus for measuring. Okay, so we want to start. I'm going to start measuring on our left on our our left floor plan, and we want to start working with zero and then we can come across and, and go the opposite way to go even back but let's start at zero okay and remember that we're going to be shooting to our left measuring point but measuring on our left floor plane this is where it gets I think the most complicated and where I used to make errors as a student so I'll show you so from one we'll make a mark and scaling here okay two We'll make a mark in scaling. Here's how I'll also do it a little bit easier. I put my pencil on the left measuring point. I abut my ruler to it, so then I can just swing up and over, and it kind of keeps it settled on one end while I'm swinging over. So now three along this line right there, four along our left plane floor line, five, okay, six, okay. Seven, eight, and they start to get smaller. Nine, right, and of course ten. There we go. Okay, so there's ten right through there to our left measuring point. Now, what if you wanted to measure more along this line? How would you do that? Well, you, then you start moving your this to this scale on this side, and. Be careful here, just, just pay really close attention to what you're doing from the left measuring point through one, then we demarcate kind of back a little bit so it's through here, okay? Then we'll scooch over to two, then we'll demarcate along our left plane still here, then we'll continue to demarcate further, three, and that's plenty right now at four, I don't think we need, that would get, starting to get more distorted the more we go out of there. So, we measured, from our flat scale, right, through to the uh, left measuring point along our room scale. Now let's thrust, go, let's go ahead and thrust our room diminishments now, because we're at 10 over here, right? This is zero, this is 10 in perspective space. Now we need to go back to the right vanishing point. Keep that in mind, so very important. So from the right vanishing point, I'll, go, I'll start back from 10, the edge of our room, okay? So we'll go back there, through here, all the way through and then some, and I'll draw. Then we'll go all the way through and then some. Keep, keep that going, draw through, right vanishing point, through our measuring points. Now we're going through the vanishing point. That's important to realize, right through there. Boom, and then some. <clears throat> right through there. Okay, and then some, and then some through there. All right, and then some. We keep on going. And we keep on trucking. There we go, going through the measuring points along our plane line, our left plane line. That's important. Through here. Now we're back at zero, which is done for us, and we'll come back to our measuring, measured point here, and it starts to get outside the cone even further, and I think I'll stop at the, the second mark right through here where I'm stopping, so be careful. Okay, let's see what, whoops, let's see what we wrought here. So now we've got nice scale diminishment starting our floor, our floor boundary, right? Okay, that's important. So now we need to find measuring points along our right floor plane. Remember, starting at zero, so it's got to be along here. I better demarcate that a little stronger so you see it. Along at zero, because that's the corner of our room that we're measured to. So let's take a look there. I'll make that red. And I've made this blue on the other end. This is the hardest part, I think. And after, after that, getting the scale through to the, to the walls, etc., I don't think is too terribly hard after that. This is the part that you've got to be careful on. So we're going to be using now our scale over here, right, and thrusting back to our right measuring point. So let's start now 
at one and we're going to be making measured marks on our right floor plane line right that was that one and this is the left one over here okay so pretty easy but just be careful so right measuring point to there make a mark then I'll scooch and swing over make a mark I could do it this way scooch and swing that way so I just put my pencil on the on the four mark and then uh, put the ruler down and swing it over to my right measuring point there really keeps it settled five to there six to there seven to our right plane line eight to our right plane line nine to our right plane line and ten to our right plane line through our measuring point right there so now we're we're pretty good to go and then if you want to over measure you could do that a little bit then of course you start on this side and you go again here whoops make sure let me make sure I get that correct so we're on our right we have to yeah mark to our right plane line I always have to double check it's here you start to get a lot of lines coming through and it would be there for the next one coming through we'll just do two more right there on two to the flat space and through there and that's going to be plenty it'll give us a little overage okay now we're ready to come through from our left measuring point through the demarcations of our right floor plane line so i'm going to start way back at 10 and then move my, my myself way up forward so i'll start it to actually i want to sharpen my pencil first so take that time to do that Sharpen up nice and tight and clean. There we go. All right. So we've got that. Then we're going to bring this over now from here over to our left vanishing, vanishing point. Remember, vanishing point. It's got to be left vanishing point. Then through this line through here, left vanishing point. I'll overdraw a little bit. Same thing here. Left vanishing point. Here, there we go, and we're just making our grid floor. Nice, perfect, tiled, scale floor. And you can see the closer they get inside the cone, the more they get inside the cone, less distortion, and then, of course, as you get further outside the cone, they start to look like more longer rectangles. So most of what we see, all, really all of what we see stays inside that cone. But we can draw in perspective uh, what the distortion does. That's pretty fun, actually. Here. And we've got it zero, and then we'll overdraw just a couple just for the, the sake of it. There. And also there. Now we're good to go. Okay. So we're good there. All right. So now we've got, let's find our 10 foot by 10 foot floor. Okay. So we've got from this zero, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten back there. Let's make it darker a little bit so we can all see it. You can see it, I can see it. The whole world can see it, so you know you can count it. So there's ten on the right, okay, and then there should be ten on the left. Or you can count the tiles even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we said three quarters equals a foot in our drawing. So these were measured in flat space along our ground line, right? And then we projected that in two point perspective. So there's a corner of our room back there, right there. And we'll just darken it in until it meets every corner and we're good to go. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we're going to do, we know where our back corner of our room is. And so our next chore... Our next, our next task is to uh, first just bring up the height of this back uh, of the room, right there in the corner. And I'm just going to bring it up eh, decently high right now. Well, we got We've still got to measure, right? So we've got to measure later on um, that the height of that room, and I'll show you how we do that. So what we need now is to bring up. Our, our scaling here. So we're at five 
and we need a total because we said our room was going to be 10 by 10 by 10, right? So I'm going to write that down where we can see it in, in clearly in the camera. So we need a 10 by 10 by 10. So 10 high, 10 deep, and also 10, 10 feet wide, okay? So in order to do that, we need to scale up then along our center of vision line this line here, we've got five feet increments because our elevation is at five. So we're right here. We need to come up now and continue on that journey and do five more increments. Remember our scale is three quarters of an inch. So one, two, three, make a mark. 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 Let's see if that's that's one, two, three, four, five. So there's 10 feet right there in flat space. Right there, that's 10 feet. So we have that. Okay, now in order to do this, do this, we've got to have, remember one of our first lessons in, in formal uh, linear perspective was referencing point. So now we need to go through right this corner right here, pay really close attention through the corner of the room back to the horizon line. And I'm gonna do it in red so you can see it, so we can create a reference point. Or you could have done it up, well, you know you really can't because we you don't know where the corner to go through. Sorry about that. Right in through here, we come through the corner of the room from, from this corner from five over one, right? We come right through over to our horizon line and we create our referencing point right in through there. There's our RP for our room, okay? Now we know where the scale is. When we come at 10 feet here, we want to come back from our 10 foot mark back to our referencing point, point through here, where they touch, go through where it touches right there of our back room. I'll keep on drawing through. That's 10 feet in perspective space. So that's our 10 foot mark now, right in through there. So we're good to go. So next thing we want to do is go from the right vanishing point. Okay, go from the right vanishing point. Mine's starting to get obliterated. From the right vanishing point through the, the that point of the room, the out through here so we can really distinguish that corner. I'm gonna darken in that back corner of our room, which is a nice 45 degree, 90 degree, excuse me, uh, turn. We know that now because we've measured it. Scale it right in through there, okay? And then we've got that room now nice and tightened in here, out, plane out now to the left. Uh, yeah, and then, so now let's go and finish out the wall of the room here from the left vanishing point. So line up from the left vanishing point. Let me get a longer ruler. You can see this from the left vanishing point through the top corner of our drawing and our wall there. Right through here. I'll draw lightly through here, then I'll go darker through here so we can see that. And now we're good to go, okay? So we've got that set in. What's the next thing we can do? Let's cut off now the walls in our little staging at 10 on each side. So from our corner here, let's cut that off at 10, go all the way up until it meets our room right there. There's our 10 foot by 10 foot wall, and we'll do the same thing. Now over here on the other side, we're still kind of inside the cone, miraculously, right? just a little bit. It's amazing, right in through there. All right, so now we've got 10 by 10 by 10. Here's our scaling here. We've got our scaling on each side, right? 10, and now we're doing it on the other side. Pretty powerful stuff, so we count over one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And look how it starts to get a little bit more distorted as we get closer outside the cone, and that really gets, you know, more scaled off in perspective as we get inside the cone. Now we've got some more scaling to do, 
And we want to scale up both both of the walls. I think that that will be helpful for us. And I'll say something about that later on. So we're going to grid this out and grid this out. But later on, when you get the hang of this and you do this for a while, you can relax some of the spacing. You don't have to do every one. You can do ones that you need. It, it kind of gives you a uh, diminishment guide, if you will. And I'll talk more about that uh, late in a later lesson coming up as well. So let's go in closer now and deeper so we can see this emerge. So we've got our room. So let's bring up now, it's a pretty easy problem to resolve. Let's bring up our verticals here from each of the floor scalings or tiles, however you want to say it. Each one and they're both, they're all, they're, each one of these are one foot by one foot with a three quarters inch scale in the beginning that we that we started off with. Just keep your pencil tight. Now it's just a problem of labor going through each individual tile as we get to the top in here running through. Whoops, there, there we go. Get that settled in, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the verticals uh, on the other side too. Might as well go ahead and do that. I'm gonna super darken in this line I want to make sure that we all read that as the corner. So super dark in through there, a little extra. Excuse me there. Make sure we get that nice and clean to, uh, to our liking. And then let's start bringing in our vertical now uh, scaling here. There's one, two, just be careful, three, hit where they touch, four, because later on you can do less of these and still get the scale that you need by doing a little bit less. And six, seven, okay, nine, ten, okay, here we go. Make sure we have ten. I don't think I counted a couple there, because I was talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, same on the other side. All right, so now we're good to go there. Okay, so now we need to uh, scale the other side, correct? All right, so we need to scale these two walls with the diminishments. How do we do that? Well, you've already started to learn how to do that. You've done it with the height of the room. Now we need to bring 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, which is the horizon line or elevation, four, three, two, one, and of course zero is the ground. So what we need to do is take from each measurement along your center of vision, go through your referencing point and make a mark onto the back corner right there, okay? Next line over through right there, nice and tight, best you can right there through the referencing point right through there rule number one in perspective and two right there and then we're at the horizon line eye level which is five okay and then we're going to scale right there along that back wall right there right there and then we've got one more in between there in perspective right in through there and then we'll have 10 demarcations all right so again what we did from our center of vision we've already scaled it through we go through the corner of the room the back corner to the referencing point and where we hit the back corner of the room that's where we make our scaling marks so that we know where to thrust our diminishment to the left and to the right. So once you do that, it becomes a pretty easy problem. So starting on the right plane, we'll shoot back to the left vanishing point. So from the left vanishing point through each of the marks where they come through. Okay, there's one there, right? And then there's one, we'll come through with our scaling right there. Okay, and again through there. You pull out of the way so you can see that really cleanly and clearly. Making our scaling marks. It's like making big bathroom tiles, one foot bathroom tiles, I suppose. But it's more, I want you to think of it more as scaling because you don't always have to do all of these. That's the point. The point is for this exercise is to run your eyes over this 
constantly. So you see three-dimensional space, you get better at representing three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface, and later on you can take very good educated shortcuts to all of this. The point is not to do this all the time unless you need it. As a matter of fact, you can do very quick sketching, be pretty accurate, and then tighten it up on top of a sketch with more linear perspective. We can talk about that and showcase that at another time even. That's probably more of my favorite thing to do is take a, take a sketch and then do perspective on top just to tighten things up, see where I miss, see where I can be a little bit more accurate. There we go. All right, now we've scaled up the right pl uh, wall of our uh, 10 by 10 foot uh, room. We're not going to do the ceiling, but well, I think I'll throw the ceiling in later in a moment, but we won't have to scale the ceiling. Okay, so now we do the same thing from the right finishing point out to each mark that we made to go along the left, the left wall. Pretty easy right through here. <coughs> and right through there. And right through there. And we keep on coming right through there. And now we're at the horizon line right, and then we're back downward here. And we're back through there. A few more lines to go for our wall there. And right through there. There we go. Okay, so now we've got, it's kind of a stage scene situation since we're pulled so far out this way. We can see, like if this was a stagecraft or a, or a movie set or a TV set, we could see all the extras and the camera would be right in through here. And that's why we have the cone and we could crop in, etc. Um, so there you go. That's your 10 foot by 10 foot start of your room. Now I want to show you, I want to, I want to put in the ceiling. And I think that's important. It's really easy to do. Right from the right vanishing point, we're going to come through this corner from the RVP through here. And it's going to get further outside the cone, so it'll look a little distorted. We'll keep going. And then we'll do the same thing in the left finishing point through this corner that helps, that tells us how far we need to go up right there. And where those two lines meet right through there, that's your true ceiling right there. So let's, I'm going to tighten that up and darken that up a little bit so you can see it here, right, and then also right in through there. You can see that as well. Whoops, so we have that kind of locked in through there. As you can kind of see, it's kind of a big uh, cube in a way uh, coming at us. And I think that is um, important to see. Okay, so we've got that started. So let's now start to put in some, a few just referencing objects. So let's do one figure and one box and maybe, maybe a window. So let's do uh, one box. I'm going to set the parameters over here uh, so you can see it. I'll write it down. So we'll do one box. Make sure I'm in the camera box. And we'll do the box at uh, three high by three feet high by four feet in length or left, if you will, and five feet right. How about that? And then we'll do one figure. Uh, one figure at six at six feet seems reasonable. And they'll be a little bit taller, obviously, than than the horizon line. Okay, so the box is three feet high by four feet left, five feet right. So let's put the box. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Uh, one two mark uh, feet in. Uh, one two three. One two three. And then one over and start there. That's where we'll start. So I'll put a dot where we're going to start. And so I want it to be four feet to the left. So that's one, two, three, four right there. So that gives me that. And so I could, I could start to darken that in a little bit. Okay. And then I want it to be, what did I write? Five feet to the right. So one, two, three, four, five right there. So it'll be a pretty decent kind of box in through there right there and so let's let's draw all the way through the back part of it through through here so that's what four and so we need to know we one two three four and stop right there and then we'll cover that up not cover that up but we'll finish out 
that corner right there. It's like basically we're drawing the bottom plane of it right there. Okay, so we've got five on the right and four on the left. Now I've got three feet up in the air. So let's go three feet high. How do we do that? Well, we want to start here, right? So I'm just going to draw like a guiding line up a little bit. I'm just going to thrust it up. Then what I have to do is come all the way over to here, okay? Go up one, two, three, demarcate there, and then from the right vanishing point, over, right, and I'm going to draw a guiding line through here from the right vanishing point, over, about right there, okay? And then I'll finish the box out from this bottom edge, right in through here, up, here, and there's my right plane of my box. Three feet high by now five feet, right, because we're five feet on the right, so three feet high in perspective. And now we can do the same thing on the other side, so we need to go three feet. So just from the corner of our box back to the left vanishing point, right in through here. And I know it's going to end about right there, so I take an educated guess. And then I bring up for my three feet, which just happens to, in my drawing, happen to be right on my center vision line, or mostly close enough to it. And then so up, up, up till it meets the corner of my box there, right, and then back now over from that corner to the right vanishing point. And I'll go over enough to see that through and through here, and then diminish enough over there, and then from this corner back to the left vanishing point, and of course where they meet up, that's where the end of our box is. And if we want to do in the inside too as well, See how they line up nice, and there we go. So we, there's our first box. It's three, three feet high by five feet to the right, right, and then four feet to the left in perspective in a two-point room, in a 10-foot by 10-foot room. So it's, it's decent size. It might be like if you're unpacking, you're moving. It could be your television, your telly, or it could be some kind of furniture or just important, you know, whatever stuffs. But now we've got two feet over here to walk back behind. So theoretically, a figure could walk back in. Just when you're when you're putting objects in your room, you always want to give you know an, you can a butt to the wall totally, but you don't want to go through the wall. And maybe we should, we should give even a thickness. What if we gave a, a a thickness to to our wall at least? Now you could scale this over and do half. I'm just going to guess what maybe half in perspective looks like. Just so we'll take an educated guess. Maybe that that's probably too much. Maybe that's six inches or half of a foot, maybe right there in, in thickness. So down through here, and then when they align here, that gets that thickness mark there and thickness mark there. So there's a little, if these were little bricks or something, we'd have a thickness. And then the same thing maybe on the other side. So I just kind of estimate what half would look like there, and then bring it up and over. Stop where it meets that diminishment line, and then kind of just darken in over there and that gives it that that extra thickness uh, that we wanted okay so now where do we want to put our six foot figure where it's probably appropriate maybe to put the figure over here we could put it in front I think I'll put it behind a little bit so I think I'm gonna put we'll go over uh, from this point so one two maybe three marks three feet over and then one two in and I'll put a dot there where I want my six six foot figure to be. And then I know that I'm going to use a different color. I'll use a red so you can really see it. And I'm just going to thrust up a line. I know it's going to be taller than the horizon line, so I'll go up a little bit. And then I need six feet, so one, two, back to the wall. And then one, two, three, four, five, six feet, okay? And then from the left finishing point, I line up that point on the wall, draw through it, and where it meets my red line, that's how tall a six foot figure will be standing this far back. And then we can just sketch out just a simple uh, a figure, if you will. So I'll kind of get in the head and through here, right? Maybe head kind of planning through here. Maybe the shoulders are this wide. I'm just making making stuff up as a good. Just kind of watch your proportions. That's where my students. They kind of miss it a little bit. They get those proportions a little, the head a little too big. Because you've got from here to the top of the head, right, to the bottom of the floor to get to head to toe. So I'll put in through there and some maybe marks for the legs and through here. It's a real kind of mannequinized kind of 
just a simple view. And then the feet would be here. Okay. And then maybe feet coming down and through here in the back, through there. And then maybe just a demarcation for the chest and then the arms come in, kind of coming down. All right, and through there. And maybe this, maybe this hand's coming out for, arm and hand coming out for whatever. And just to get a little scale and through there. And then we could tone that in if we wanted to to make that show up a little bit better. Something pretty simple and diagrammatic. And later on, this can get much, much, much more complex, obviously. There we go. So now we have a six foot figure in scale in our composition. I think what I'll do is I'll tone in this. Um, this box here a little bit too. I'll just do it in graphite so we can see it. Maybe it's a little bit lighter on this top plane. And then maybe a little bit darker on this right side plane and through here. Just, just to give that a little bit more dimension. And through here. Plane transition a little bit more right in through, right in through. This. So that gives you a nice idea of uh, what we have, and then maybe we could put another two point form here. But what if it's at a different, you know, angle? So let's put down like um, a little rug or a piece of a piece of paper down in through here. So let's get a different angle than what we had before. So I'm going to shoot for. I'll do this in blue so we can really see this. We've done this before, so this is nothing really new. I think I'll put it right here in the corner, and then I'll shoot for my left plane here. Here's my left finishing point. So that's my LVP for my uh, uh, LVP, sorry, P for my rug out through there. So it's a little far out. So let me make sure that you can see that. It's not going to be good if you can't, right? Doesn't make any sense. There we go. So there's my left finishing point for my rug. I arbitrarily set that in right there. And then remember now, for the right finishing point for that rug, I need to come through the station point at 90, right? So right in through here, station point at 90. I'll draw a light blue line. And then out of that station point comes the 90, actually. So I'll line up my 90 degree, 45, 45, 90 degree ruler. And then out of that station point comes the 90 right there. And there's the right. RVP for my rug, right in through there, for the right plane. Okay, so now we can draw uh, any kind of dimension we want and stick to the left and right finishing point for that rug. So maybe I'll make this, I'm gonna pull this out, make this a little bit longer. We'll try to keep it in the room completely. So here's the right vanishing point for the rug through here and maybe it's under it could be underneath the box a little bit maybe that would be cool too so I'll keep it in the room about right there and draw all the way through so you can see that and maybe I can cut it off oh maybe right here it might look pretty good so I'm just kind of playing around with space I'll put a dot to show you what I'm doing and then back to the right vanishing point for the rug right to there and it ends up back there. So it's see-through and blue a little bit. So now you can see where that rug is. So I'll draw it in darker so you can see it and I'll color it in and then we'll kind of guesstimate as to how big I made it because I don't know. It's probably, it's close to 10 feet. I know that, but it's not quite. It's probably close to three or four feet in width because we, can, we already have a scale down there so we can accurately sort of look at it. So later on, you can kind of loosen up all your rigidity. These are not meant to be so rigid but you can loosen up the rigidity uh, a little bit and play around with the funner, funner prop, more fun properties to that. I said funner. How about that for bad English? That's American English, funner. Okay, so I'm gonna color in the rug here so you can see that. This funner rug. It was funner to draw. And there it is. Now. Of course, we're seeing through it. So I only colored in the parts that 
we're going to see come through because the box is sitting down on top of the right. So how, how big do we think it is? Well, here's the corner of our room. It's about the length of one, two, three. It's about maybe three and a half feet. And how wide is it or how deep is it? Uh, it's about, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feet. So it's about, that rug is approximately, I'm going to put this over here, is about, a, a, for approximate, three feet by eight feet. And that's just a, a decent guess because of the scaling and the size of the whole thing. What if we wanted to put a picture on the wall over here? Let's say you have a poster and you want to hang, you just moved into your new apartment or your new flat. And you're, you know, if you're living in London, you're overpaying, you know, quite a bit, or New York City, like I used to live, or LA even, and you're overpaying quite a bit for a tiny, tiny place, especially if you're a student. And you want to, you want to jazz things up and hang a poster there. So how about, let's make a poster, let's put it kind of in the middle Let's make it from here, right? One, two, three, four. Four feet across. Remember, left finishing point for the room, not the rug. Right there, four feet across there, and then maybe one, two, three, four, five, six down below here. So I'll draw a lighter line through, right through there. And then I'll tighten these up, my verticals. So the box would, will overlap the poster a little bit too. That's good. There and also here on the edge as well. And there's our poster on the wall. And that was four by six. Right in through there. One, two, three, four. Whoops, I made it five, sorry. It's like I can't count. Make sure I got it six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's five by six. Sorry about this. So that's five by six. There we go. All right. So our poster now was five feet by six. In our in our rug was about three feet by um, uh, eight feet as well. So we can scale that and we're good to go. All right. So there we go. That was a two point room, ten feet by ten feet by ten feet. We measured that scale both on our measuring line, our ground line and our center vision, right? We knew that our elevation was at five feet, which gives any figure that's six foot, are, it's going to be taller than the horizon. That's important. Let me, let me also show you one more technique. I'll, I'll pull out enough here. You can take, once you do this, you could take your kneaded eraser and kind of pull it apart, clean it up a little bit, get it all uh, clean from the funk and the gunk, and it kind of magically, chemically cleans itself, right? And then you can take it and kind of stamp it down flat. I think I've showed you this before. But then gloss over the outside of your drawing, not where you drew your room, but over. See how I'm kind of erasing it? You can still see everything that you've drawn, but it's, but it's a little bit lighter, and it makes your room illuminate forward, and we can see everything. So I'll take all this, and I'll just kind of lightly erase back a little bit. I don't, I don't want to race it all out. I probably can anyway any, now, but it, it, it uh, starts to lighten all this up and you still have that information, right? But it keeps the room darker. So I'm, the only part I'm not erasing is the actual, everything in the room, including the ceiling. I'm racing back just enough, and I'm just taking this flat plane of my kneaded eraser and just cleaning it and kind of glossing and coating it. It gets rid of smudges. It keeps the work that you want. You want to be able to see that work. I think that's important, especially my students. I always want to see your work unless I say otherwise for NKU, but for anybody else, you know, you're, a little, you're obviously more freer. And so... There we go, and it keeps it keeps that inside nice and dark and clean there. So there you go. There's your two point, ten foot by ten foot by ten foot room, in measured, in measured scale, and you got that. And of course now, if you want to crop into this, 
and make a picture plane out of that. You can go crop in and, and say, hey, do I want a vertical composition or do I want something, you know, really tightly cropped in like a movie ratio or do I want something more square or more rectangular, uh, more a little bit longer, horizontal or vertical, you can do that. So you have a lot of room to crop in because if you're a movie camera, you really can't do that. Or if you're a digital camera, that's harder to do until you bring it into Photoshop. Here we can do it right away. Okay, there you go. Now we'll go on to exercise 35 later and we're going to extend the scale and make the scale, uh, the increments of the scale be larger so you can get uh, into an industrial kind of size as well. Alright, see you then. Bye-bye.